Today, um, this, uh, today we're going to be uh, talking about uh, the general equilibrium uh, model and it's often divided into uh, two sections, the consumption sector as well as the production sector. You might remember from earlier on in your studies, um, if you are using Pandaic as the textbook, that in chapter 3 and chapter 4 you discuss the consumer theory, and then in chapter 6 and chapter 7 you discuss the production sector theory. So what we're doing here, we're taking the two, combine the two together and have the whole economy that represents the two sectors. Just to remind you, what when we were discussing uh, the equilibrium for consumption, we had a condition uh, for, for, um, for that sector. And just a, a quick reminder of what uh, that condition was, we said that the marginal rate of substitution between good X and good Y should equal to the price ratio of the two products. And that was a condition for just one consumer in that market. If you want to remember what it looked like, we would represent it uh, with uh, indifference curves, have your good Y on the Y axis and then your good X, and then would have the indifference curves. So basically what this uh, told us was that the slope of these indifference curves, which is represented by your marginal rate of substitution, should be equal to the slope of the budget line. Now the budget line just represents um, how big your pocket is as a consumer, how much you could afford. So the more outward the budget line is in your axis, the more money you, you have and the more goods you can afford. For instance, you could have your budget line sort of running somewhere around there, okay? And what is represented by the slope? It's just the slope. It's not how far, how inward or out, outward the budget line is. And at a point where one of the indifference curves is tangent to that budget line, so at that point, the slope of this indifference curve is the same as the slope of that budget line. And that would have been your condition one in your consumption sector where you only had one consumer. In the production sector, you'd have the same thing. The only difference that, you, that you'd have is that you'd be talking about isoquants as opposed to indifference curves, and you'd also be talking about inputs as opposed to goods that you're consuming. So you can think about the producer as consuming inputs in their production process. And what the isoquants would then represent are the output levels. So the same way that you've got your indifference curves is the same way that you'd have your isoquants. And it's the same analogy that applies to the consumer sector as well as to the uh, production sector. So what you would have in the, in the production sector, same analogy. But instead of having indifference curves, you have isoquants. And then instead of having the goods, good Y and good X, you would have inputs, capital and labor. And similar relationship would apply. But in the production sector, we don't say that a producer is maximizing output. What we say is that he, is, he or she is, is minimizing costs. Okay? So, and it's really the same thing. We're just thinking about it inversely. So instead of trying to go to the highest level of output, we try and achieve the same level of output, but using the same cost. So we're minimizing costs, okay? We, we try and achieve a very, very high level of output with the same cost. So we call it a cost minimization condition, but it really is the same thing. So the budget line in the consumption sector, in the production sector, we just call it a cost line, okay? And it, it, it's, the, the shape is the same, okay? And that would represent your total cost. So as a consumer, you would want to be producing some level of output, keeping the same cost or, or using the same cost. The costs that you are using are costs for your capital as well as the cost for your labor, the same as it was with the price for good Y and the price uh, for good X. 
So really, it's, it's, it's the same analogy. And we said at that point there, you are at equilibrium in the production sector. And the condition that applied there, we said it was the marginal rate of technical substitution using capital and labor should be equals to the price ratio of these two inputs. And that would be the wage and the interest rate. So you can see that this relationship is analogous to that relationship. And what we do in the, in the general equilibrium, the two by two economy model, we're taking these two and we're putting them together. But we start off by analyzing the consumption sector with two consumers instead of just one consumer, two consumers and two goods. And that's what we're going to be doing next.